Yeah, it okay, so we're ready to go. Okay, these, um, the objective of this little video today is to um, just see the major components of um, a couple of our popular small burner guns. This, uh, this one on my right here is the uh, BR5, that's about a 50 kilowatt burner. And uh, you can see it's a BR5 pretty quick because it's uh, about our only small burner that's in the uh, blue colour. And then on my left here um, is a BR10. This is a burner that uh, produces a flame up to about 100 to 110 kilowatts, which is about uh, 980 millimeters long. You'll immediately notice similarities between the two burners. Pretty much all the changes with the BR series burners is um, you want a bigger flame, and the uh, size of the burner gets bigger. So functionally, they're uh, virtually identical. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at the BR10, and there'd be hundreds of these around Australia. Uh, this is where the flame comes out. So we'll take this blast tube off, and to do that. I'm going to have to remove uh, very quickly a grub screw here and remove the blast tube. And what we're going to do is just have a look at the nozzle and the electrodes and have a quick chat about them. Let's put that down over there. Okay, so this is the business end of the burner. It's this um, steel nozzle which is quite large which is where the vapour comes out and is ignited by this pair of electrodes sitting above it. Okay, even at this stage it's worth mentioning, obviously um, the, you don't like to have a lot of carbon build up around here, so a lot of people have had problems with um, poor ignition can be due just to carbon build up. That's fixed very easily, it's just by wiping the, um, wiping the electrodes. We'll talk more about that later. Um, this ring around here is, we, we call it here a, uh, a diffuser ring um, or a diffuser plate and the idea of this thing is to create, um, uh, push the vapours forward and create a spiral twisting um, vapour stream which is ignited and produces a uh, spiral flame. has a very nice effect. Okay, just coming back here a little bit, um, you'll see these porcelain pipes here, uh, insulators there, they're just to um, support the, uh, this pair of electrodes here. Coming back here is uh, one of the uh, modifications that we do here and there's a uh, little heat rod there and uh, that heat rod keeps the vapours nice and warm as they shoot forward down this um, nozzle pipe. Okay, let's go back and look at the at the body of the BR-10 here. If you're talking to us on the phone, we'll normally refer to this as the scroll. It's the chassis of the burner and it's very uh, solid and very heavy. Sitting above that is the ignition transformer. It uh, produces the spark. Sitting behind that is the uh, controller and it's got various safety functions such as detecting that the um, there's a nice flame and um, also looking for darkness at the beginning of the ignition phase. Um, this button here is um, a flame failure switch and that'll go, um, go bright red if uh, the burner's gone out for some reason. Okay, just moving back over here. Uh, major pieces on this are the um, silver wheel here which you adjust by slightly undoing the brass nut and increasing the amount of oil or flame length. The bigger the number the bigger the flame. Now when you do that um, obviously if you're adding more uh, fuel to the uh, fire or the flame you've got to increase the air. So you would open up this what's called secondary air supply window here to give it more air. Okay, so part of trimming the burner gun and setting it up is uh, to get the oil and air combination right, and that's very simple. But if you get it wrong, it looks horrible, and you get horrible black smoke coming out of the flue. Well, when the gun's trimmed, okay, nice, uh, no problems there. Okay, just uh, okay. So that's the uh, silver silver wheel to adjust the flame length. 
sitting on the back here, uh, I'm going to remove a cover and what we're going to see is the heat rod and the thermostat that uh, senses the oil temperature set point inside the burner. Okay, so just pull that out and remove the loom of wires here. And what we can see is up here we've got a thermostat and it's got a, a wheel on it and currently right now that's set to 80. Just under 80, now it's on 80. This thermostat turns off and on uh, a heat rod here that fits in the back of the uh, of the um, preheat chamber here. And uh, the idea of the heat rod and the thermostat is to get the waste oil up to a nice dribbly, viscous um, shape so that um, it will create a, a nice vapour and will have no ignition problems. Okay, so that's the heat rod, that's the thermostat. Uh, from time to time we might ask people to increase or decrease that temperature depending on the type of oil. If it's real dribbly oil, we might ask them to turn it down to about 30-40 degrees. Okay. While we're over here, just sitting under the uh, silver wheel here, is a Y strainer or Y filter that uh, we add here at the factory and this draws uh, hot oil in from the preheat chamber and that oil is drawn through and up into here via a little pump that's hidden inside this housing. Okay. Now that wire strainer has to be cleaned and examined periodically. We'd recommend initially when you get a burner gun to check it out after two weeks or at least four weeks and it depends on the quality of your waste oil. The more rubbish is in it, the more uh, dirt will end up in here. So that's, uh, that's a filter. It's very important. It's small but it's important. And there's another filter over here that's the major oil input strainer. Now this fitting here is a half inch to one inch uh, oil pipeline and the waste oil comes in gravity fed into the preheat chamber here and that's our oil supply. Okay, all that oil runs through a uh, quite a coarse strainer here. Now I've got one here. Okay, there's a, a spare preheat tank. It looks identical to that one over there. And we'll just have a quick look at this. This is another very important little filter. And it's only about a one millimeter mesh or slightly less. Uh, but it'll catch any rubbish that uh, comes out of your um, oil supply system. Okay, now it's very important again for uh, you people that have uh, just got a new burner gun that you check this out and clean it about every uh, two weeks to four weeks. Um, if you do get a gun and uh, it's all running nice, uh, you have a look at it after two weeks and if it's real clean then you don't have to do it again, you know, maybe have a look at it four weeks later and so on. But if it's filthy, then maybe you should check it out every week. Okay, so two filters that you must clean. The Y strainer filter here and this uh, the main uh, filter here. By the way that's a 32mm hex head. Okay so they're the filters. Just quickly above that how much time we got to go Jim? 2.26. Okay just above that what we've got uh, this pump uh, its output uh, okay, so just backing up a little bit inside here, I mentioned before there's a, a, a pump, it's a little piston pump, and uh, the amplitude of that uh, piston or the size of the swing and the pressure it creates uh, is varied by the silver uh, uh, wheel there. Okay, so the bigger flame, you want a bigger flame, more pressure. Uh, its output comes in here. Now this uh, oil, hot oil, comes out of there and goes into this thing called a solenoid valve. Okay, now this solenoid valve is switched off or on through this cable, 240 volts, uh, by the controller. Um, sometimes this can end up with some rubbish in it and we might ask you to take the one, two, three uh, connections off that and uh, disassemble it and clean it. 
Uh, that doesn't happen that often, but uh, that might happen to you. Um, and uh, it, it's about a five minute job to pull it apart and clean it. Okay, we'll get back onto that later. Um, just while we're, okay, so that's the solenoid valve. If you hear us mention uh, the word solenoid valve, or you read about it in the manual that comes with all the burner guns and is available on our website for free, that's the solenoid valve. Okay, just another couple of points of interest. The air input, the air, air gets sucked into the uh, oil air mixing chamber, which is built into the preheat tank. That's the air input there. It's quite simple. It'll just sucks air in from inside the scroll. The output, once oils, uh, oil and air have been mixed together and compressed slightly by the internal compressor here, the oil goes out to the nozzle via the oil pipeline. So that's the oil output. So that's uh, in fact got mist in it. So that'll have the oil and the air mixed, slightly compressed, and a nice little vapour, and that squirts out to the nozzle, and that gets ignited. Okay, just another major item here is we've got the mm. degassing pipe. Okay, so the next time we'll see you, we'll just continue on our little chat here. So that's the degassing pipe for now.